Hey, I'm RJ Soria of Traverse Apparel, and today we're going to talk about the basics of how CalTopo can help you navigate outdoors. While we also released a video on gaining trail beta using Google Earth, you'll find that CalTopo is probably the stronger resource when used for this purpose. This is mostly because the focus of it is a topographic map viewer instead of satellite imagery, which is actually included as well. With that being said, we are going to stick to the absolute basics, including navigating the CalTopo interface, adjusting the map layers, importing a GPX file or GPS coordinates, adding objects, and finally printing maps. Before we get into it, I want to point out that I am not an expert in topography or in CalTopo for that matter. This tutorial is meant to give you a basic understanding of the application. So I'm going to assume that you already understand the fundamentals of topography, and I'll skip through a lot of the menu options in the interest of time. All right, let's get into it. Head over to caltopo.com and let's look over the overall interface. Center screen is a topographic map rendering. In the top right corner, you will see a layers menu that might say something like Map Builder Topo, which indicates its current active base layer. Click on this item to open a layers panel with a series of checkboxes indicating each of the map overlays you can toggle between. Click on the selected base layer at the top of this menu and a drop down will appear. From here, you can choose between the many different maps available in CalTopo. To close this menu, click on the layers panel once again. Just below it are some longitude and latitude coordinates to indicate your current position, which should be based on the position of your mouse cursor by default. Hover over the word CalTopo to reach the help menu, which has additional resources like a guided tour and a support forum. To its right is an add button, which will allow you to add new objects and custom layers. Further along, you have the import and export options, which allow you to transfer GPS data between CalTopo and your desktop or GPS device. The measure menu option includes tools for measuring conditions like weather, sun exposure, terrain, as well as a pretty cool simulated view option. Next over is the print menu, which allows you to print these extremely useful maps to take with you on your outings. To the right of print is the config menu option, which is for fiddling with some of the application settings. And finally, there is a search box for finding a location via GPS coordinates or even a specific location name. Moving on to the panel just left of the map viewer are login options, and below that you'll find some preset map layer options that are generally all you'll need for finding your way around the backcountry. Let's delve into an example of using some of the tools I've just described. Head up to the search bar and type in Icehouse Canyon Trailhead. Select Go, and you should be taken to the Mount Baldy area in the Angeles National Forest. Move the map viewer southeast and zoom out a little bit using your scroll wheel to view the canyon system runoff from Ontario Peak. Toggle between the preset layers just described and notice that the maps differ quite a bit. For now, keep the Forest Service map selected. Next, move the cursor over the map layer icon and notice the additional layer marked normal. If you click on the word and browse the many layer options, you'll see that normal refers to a shaded relief setting, which gives the map a 3D feel and helps the topography become easier to read. Alright, let's try and find a route up to Sugarloaf Peak from the Icehouse Canyon Trailhead. Head back to the trailhead and you'll quickly find that our current map selection doesn't indicate the parking lot very well, which is our actual starting point. Switch over to the map builder topo where you'll find the parking lot loop is clearly indicated. Find the add new object menu option and select add marker. Initially, the marker will show up center screen, but you can just click and drag it to find a more exact location. At the bottom right of your viewer, you'll see a window that allows you to label your new marker. Let's call this Icehouse Canyon Trailhead. Then change the color of the marker to green, indicating a starting point. Next, head up to the search bar and type in the coordinates 34.2414, negative 117.6345. This is Sugarloaf Peak. It's already titled on our map. I simply wanted to show you that you can use longitude and latitude coordinates to find locations as well. Now you might think, well, we can just go straight up the northern slope of Sugarloaf Peak as the crow flies. And in some cases, this could be true. However, let's go ahead and add a new object again, and this time we'll create a line segment. If we move back to the map viewer, we'll see a crosshair icon appear. Click once near the trailhead marker to start a line segment, then go ahead and move directly to Sugarloaf Peak so we can investigate this potential route. Double click on the peak to end the line segment. Since we didn't name the path, head over to the panel on the left and click on the NA default title. A menu will pop up along the path we just created. This menu is very useful and from the available options I'm sure you can understand why. For now, go ahead and click on edit. A new window will open in the bottom right corner of the map viewer. Let's name this path bad idea, since it probably is, and click OK. We should confirm that this title is appropriate. Return to the left sidebar where a new lines and polygons panel should appear. 
click on the profile icon for our new line, which is indicated by a graph. A profile window will appear on the bottom of the map viewer, and at the top of this window are some numerical values. The first are marked cursor and represent the elevation and mileage of wherever your cursor lands. The range values represent the lowest and highest altitude, while the gross represents the overall vertical gain and loss. Below that, the overall elevation gain and distance are marked inside of the graph. These two values alone should give you enough information regarding the reality of our intended route. A vertical distance of nearly 2,000 feet in just over half a mile is extremely steep. We can also see on our map that the green area indicates forested land, which may or may not be passable. Let's double check this by switching to our hybrid satellite preset layer and using our scroll wheel to zoom in on our route where we can confirm that there is at least one section which would likely be impassable due to the dense chaparral here. We'd very likely ruin our gear and end up covered in ticks if we attempted this path. Alright, I think we've taken this example far enough for everyone to understand the difficulties behind backcountry route finding. I'd recommend basing your routes on visual experience while outdoors and then using CalTopo to confirm a route's feasibility instead of the other way around. Let's go ahead and find a better way to the top of Sugarloaf Peak. I happen to know that the canyon just east of this route, called Falling Rock Canyon, is definitely the way to go. In fact, I already have a path laid out for the route which I made on Google Earth using the path tool before exporting as a KMZ file. The link for this file is available in the description for this video. And if you'd like to follow along, go ahead and pause this video and download the file. After saving the file, go ahead and move up to your import option, select choose file and do exactly that. An import data window will pop up. Make sure all checkboxes are selected and select import. Once the file has populated, right click on the path and select profile in the drop down menu. If we compare this profile to our bad idea path, we can see that it is much more forgiving, although still fairly steep. Close this window and delete the bad idea path. Okay, it seems like we have our route all lined up and it's time to go hike. Let's take a minute to check the weather. Right click once again on our path and hover over point info. Now click on NOAA forecast. A new window will pop up that takes us directly to the National Weather Service site and pulls up the current conditions for your exact route location. Everything looks good, so let's print our map. Hover over the print menu option at the top of the browser window and select print to PDF for JPEG. A new tab will open up with a red box indicating our print area and it seems to be a little out of place. To fix this, click and drag the red marker in the center of the box to better suit your needs. You can also resize the box to include more of the surroundings. Now let's say we spotted a ridge line that leads up to Ontario Peak from Sugarloaf last week and we want to print out a second map to check it out. We can click on add page in the sidebar to add a second page to our PDF print file. Click on generate PDF to create a print ready document. CalTopo will open a new window that looks something like this. In the top right corner you can see a download and print icon which you can use accordingly. Let's close these print windows and head back to our original page. If you'd like to save the map for latter use, you can click on the Save Maps option in the sidebar. If you aren't already signed in, it will ask you to do so and a Save As window will appear. Name the map and below you'll be given the option to share your map if you'd like. I'm going to make it viewable with the link and select Save. You'll notice that the hyperlink in your browser window has been simplified and that's your shareable link. To find previously saved maps later, simply log in and click on your account email to be taken to your account page, which includes any previously saved items. So that is everything we are going to go through in this tutorial, and I've got to admit, everything I talked about just barely scratches the surface of what you can do with CalTopo. I highly recommend taking some time to further explore its menu options and tools. If you find this tool useful like I do, I would definitely recommend logging in and hitting that upgrade button in the menu. This entire web application was put together by one person, and it's pretty incredible that they offer it for free. On top of that, the benefits to purchasing even the basic plan are well worth the upgrade cost. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new today. Feel free to like, subscribe, and comment with any questions or suggestions for future videos. Finally, don't forget to head over to TraverseApparel.com to read some pretty detailed trip reports on Southern California's local wilderness, or even to support us by picking up one of our Trail Never Ends t-shirts. Happy hiking.